stand for our opening hymn.
angel, um, this is a wilderness place. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official in Bay Street, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He came to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb, silent before it gets sheared, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak. And starting with the scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop. And both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water. And Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at his oaks, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read Psalm 22, verses 24 to 38. My praise. I will call on my house in the presence of those who worship me. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May the heart live forever. All the givers of the earth shall remember to return to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow down before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him him alone and all the seeds he heard bow down to worship. All who go down to the dust fall off the Lord. My soul shall live for him. My sinners shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and be known to a people and yet the Lord, the saving deeds that he has done. Reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sin. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love of God as for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love is being perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so we are in this world. 
There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Stand for a second. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified in this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord
I speak to your charity here present and those of you on Zoom in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We began the service, as we always do, the celebration of the Eucharist, with a collect of the dead. Today is read, Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life. Grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow in his, step, his steps in the way which leads to eternal life. This collect alludes to a different passage in the Gospel of John just before the one that we actually already read for, that we read for today. The readings you see are on a three-year cycle, but we only have one year's worth of collect, so sometimes it happens that the collect really goes more to last year's reading. I'm not necessarily a fan of the three-year cycle, but whatever, neither here nor there. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. The context is this. Jesus has just said, and you know the way to the place where I'm going. And Thomas says to him, Lord, but we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I think there is a spiritual truth concealed in this oft-quoted and alas, oft-abused verse. Thomas asks for a way. Jesus says, not only I am the way, but also I am the truth and I am the life. Since he has each of these three, the way, the truth, and the life, I think it's safe to say that they are three aspects of the same thing. I think he offers these three metaphors since, um, because we have different needs at different times, or we have different aspects of our own being that, uh, that are nurtured by Jesus in different ways. And sometimes we consciously identify more with one of them than with another. A way is something you travel or follow or chart. A truth is something you believe or tell or figure out. A life is something you live. So what do you need? Of course, you actually need all three, but what are you most conscious of needing right now? Many years ago at this point, a college friend came to me and told me she wasn't sure she believed in God anymore. God as truth was complicated for her, at least didn't have much appeal on a conscious level. In seeking faith, she seemed to be coming up empty. I suggested to her then that it may be a faith that didn't seem to be what God was offering her right now, she might consider focusing on hope or love for the time being. Last I heard, she was actually considering conversion to Judaism, which truth be told made sense in a lot of things that she had shared with me over the years. Sound spiritual discernment isn't about the membership retention, so I'll stand by my advice. My friend was struggling with faith and getting nowhere. Now I'm all about faith. But as I think I've told you before, the language of faith is so badly abused in our culture that sometimes I think it's best to start elsewhere. If you seem to be getting nowhere with faith, it might be because it's your time to focus on hope or love instead. In this life, to truly have any of these three would mean having the other two as well. You get to the same place. But faith, hope, and love, this comes from Paul, not from John. It's the concluding verse of 1 Corinthians 13. You probably heard it read at a wedding at some point. John here, Jesus here in John, gives us a different set of three things. Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. These are not our virtues or activities, but three ways of talking about the giver and object of our faith, our hope, and our love. Jesus. We've prayed and perfectly know him to be the way, the truth, and the life. And we believe that God is able and willing to grant our prayer, especially since it's based on Jesus' own promises. God will grant us all of these three. In fact, if you have one, if you knew Jesus as any one of these, you would know him as the other two, because he is all three. So perhaps you can ask yourself, what speaks to you most right now in your present state? What moves you the most? What do you most feel the lack of? Way, truth, or life? If you're struggling with truth and getting nowhere, like my college friend, 
You might ask what it would mean to follow Jesus as the way instead. As a canon of the diocese that has met with our vestry a few times keeps, has asked us in a number of conversations, what does it mean to live and love like Jesus and help others to do the same? If believing in Jesus seems hard right now, you can start by following Jesus. Read and meditate on his life, which is a Christian version of what the psalmist says when the first psalm says of the righteous person, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. You can see how that will transform your life even if you, you, even if you don't end up even possibly coming to faith you know, around, through, around the back way. And I don't mean necessarily suddenly and dramatically coming to faith. That does happen to some people, it happens quite often. But for others, it's more a matter of realizing at some point that you've actually had it for some time. Maybe you just haven't noticed it. But sometimes, truth is what you need. Way is well and good, but sometimes the truth is what you need. A consciousness of faith is what you need. One way this might look is if the world, as it presents itself self to our senses and to our reason, seems more like it's just driving into despair. And despair is, frankly, a pretty reasonable reaction to it, more often than not. Maybe you need to know that the world as we experience it is not the world in its completeness. It is not the truth of God's creation. You need to know that there is a God. You need to know that there is a savior. You need to know that there is a day of judgment when the lies will be unmasked and will melt away before the revelation of God's truth. That truth is available to you now because Jesus Christ is the truth, which you may not see with your eyes, but which you may know by faith. Or even if you're not given to despair at the moment, Maybe your body and mind work in such a way that you need to think things through. Or maybe it's not even so much a matter of thinking things through, but the thinking things through is, just transforms your life. Maybe you're the sort of person where God's primary way into your being is through your intellect. Jesus, his name be glorified, gives himself to us, therefore, as truth. And then there's life. I'm tempted to say that this is something deeper than following the way or believing and knowing the truth, but these are all just aspects of the same thing. There are three different ways Jesus names himself. Are you dead? You need life. Are you fainting? You need life. Are you cut off from others, dismembered yourself? You need life. You need access to that source of all things that lives deep within and under all things, and which springs up sometimes to the surface in some holy places and times and people. And you can access it in prayer. You can learn to pray in many ways, in our liturgy, in silence, or while you're doing something else. There are ways to learn this. And I'm actually talking to my predecessor, Father Hubbard, about this, that we might start finding some ways to, to, to teach people who are interested in learning the ways of prayer. I'm kind of tempted to say that as the way, Jesus offers himself to our action. As truth, he offers himself to our thought, and as life, he offers himself to our contemplation. I'll say that with the caveat that there are other ways to construe this. The main thing is that there are different ways to encounter Jesus at different times, but that what we encounter in each of them is him. And so each one contains all the others. And on that note, I come at length, but not quite as an afterthought, to the actual passage for today, which is not I am the way and the truth and the life, but I am the true vine. He's the vine, we're the branches, and we live and grow if we abide in him. I think this metaphor of the vine and the branches holds together these metaphors of the way, the truth, and the life. Action, thought, and our attempts at contemplation are useless and fruitless if we do not abide in Jesus. Jesus is what enables each of these three that he names to contain the other two. Abiding in Jesus is both the easiest thing in the world and the hardest. I don't want to ruin the metaphor by explaining it, so ask him what he means. No, really, ask him what he means, and 
what it means for you in particular. All I know of it is that just as the life of the, of, of the whole plant flows through the whole thing, it flows into the, 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 the branches, the, the branches and thus the, the flowers and the grapes, through the vine to which they're attached, he is our life. He lives deep within us. He lives through us. In the mysteries of his revelation, in the mysteries of our of, of, of the scripture and of the sacraments and of our life together, are ways in which we abide in and come to know and bear fruit in this life. The fruit is the joy of the Lord. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. I to stand the proclamation of our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that everyone should every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all the children and motor party and nation of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works be found favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let the light of the dead shine upon them. We praise you for your saints. Enter into the joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own deeds and those who are. Okay, the intercession. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, especially for David, Amanda, Father, Kathy, Trace, Charlie, Andrea, Chase, Nicole, Corinne, Melissa, Debbie, Brian, 
Shirley and Valerie, Ayan, Patricia, Robin, Yvonne, Polly, Lou, Uni, Stuart, Clara, Lisa, Imani, Dagmar, Betty, Tony, Doris, and even and others we may be them aloud or silent. We renew our prayers for Angel and her family. Pray for Verena, whose dissertation defends me this week. The altar flowers being in loving memory of Clarice Crossdale, we pray for her and for all others who have granted the eternal rest of the Lord and the life of virtue will shine upon them. Are there any birthdays in the coming week? I don't think I got any of any, any emails from anyone this week. Since there's almost always someone I don't know about, O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants who celebrate and begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, everyone. In a uh, in normal times, this is where we do the offering. Um, we can't pass a plate, so for those of you who are present, there is an offering plate out in the narthex. Um, feel free to drop whatever God moves you to into there as you uh, come or leave. Uh, those of you who are at home may uh, go on to a realm or uh, send in a check if, uh, if you'd rather send it by mail. Um, same procedure as us. Um, walk in love as Christ lo loved us and gave himself an offering for us. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right before our praise. It is right, the good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son. Jesus Christ, our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb who has sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this day to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. After we had fallen into sin and had become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
You have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, everyone. What do you mean you can't read lips under the mask? on someone and have their, uh, hire them for their first call, and the problem is they don't remember where the wedding anniversary prayers are. <laughs> we'll just say, we'll just improvise one. In uh, normal times, I would ask you to come forward, but uh, these times, I'm going to ask you to, the two of you to just stand. Blessed and beloved God, we give you thanks for Pauline and Junior for the gift of their relationship and their life together, the way that glorifies you, enhances the life of their family and of our community. We pray that you will continue to bless them, bless their family, bless all the ways that they live and move and have their being in you and in our community now and all the days of their life. We ask this through the mercies in the name of the parents of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Now, everything else sort of pales in comparison to that. But yeah, as I was saying, if we're apparently no one can understand me under the mask, um, we are going to try to move. Uh, I want to try as an experiment using all, all the midweek mid prayer on Wednesday, the Bible study on Thursday, use that through uh, the same link that we now use for Sunday. So just one link works for everything. You don't have to figure out which one to use on a given night. Hopefully, that will eliminate the occasional misunderstanding that is uh, that has happened. Um, the wheelbarrow for change for women aware is still outside. So um, if you've been collecting your change or, or if you've got any change, you can definitely be collecting it. Let us relieve you of it. It's a nuisance. Give it to a good cause. Members of our congregation have benefited from the ministry of women aware. This is a, an important thing in our community. Or th this, this, don't neglect your pledge, but this counts as an offering to God too. Um, I know this. Oh, yes. Uh, as I said in an announcement on Realm, on Thursday, pending uh, suitable weather and, uh, and a couple of other things, I plan to do uh, drop in hours out in front of the church. I'll be sitting at that table out there. I think three to five is what I said in the, in the thing. Um, the, this does have to be also slightly pending. A, uh, a member of my immediate family is getting their second. Uh, COVID vaccine on, um, on on earlier in the day on Thursday. So if she has a, uh, a particularly bad reaction to it, I may have to reschedule this. I'll put it on Realm and have Mary Ellen forward it over the email. So do check your email before you come. 
But if nothing appears, come. Um, this will not be the last time we do this, especially if the weather gets better. Uh, how do we start today? Okay, so the, the, our, our partner church, the Tamil Gospel Church, will be resuming their worship here at the sanctuary uh, this evening. The, um, the illness having worked its way through the system, and now we, we, they, they believe that they, can, that they can safely resume that. Uh, anything else I need to announce? Okay, Aaron also, is that something? If you'd like, you can go to the, the microphone over there. We need to confer. If you'd like, you can go to the microphone over there. My mom is really doing second. Okay. Okay, great. So I have a month to get this in my. Uh, <laughs> thank you. We, that's a good announcement. Uh, I have a month to remember this now. And then Erin also has a couple of announcements. And I'll invite her to use uh, the lecture mic. Thank on Zoom to um, Marley and Brian Coach and to Mike. Uh, they were here for quite a while yesterday. You have the chance to um, take a walk outside here um, to the prayer garden. They did a lot of work yesterday cleaning up and kind of revamping um, the labyrinth area um, and we they're working on the, the garden, the memorial garden. Um, they spent some time uh, just between raking leaves and um, Mike did a, a lot of work in terms of putting um, the stakes in the ground um, for a lot of our parishioners that are no longer with us anymore. Marlene took care of getting the names ordered on the plaques and Mike took care of getting the plaques um, put out there. Um, I don't know if you noticed when you came in that Bill Elbert's name is now right outside here in the entry <clears> when you come in. So that was a lot of hard work and dedication on their part. Um, we're not done yet. Um, Marlene and I are going to be taking care of some perennial plants out there and some flowers to kind of really make it nice again out there. So. If you have a chance to see them, kind of give them a thumbs up and a thank you because they spent a lot of time out there yesterday. Um, because I'm here and I have to do altar guilt after, there will be no women's um, link meeting for today. So I just want to give you um, two things to look for. Um, number one, I am calling on all um, creative people right now. Um, we are looking for baskets to be to be color coded. And we are looking for pastel baskets to be made um, for June. Uh, meaning, uh, you can pick a pastel color, I'm doing yellow, and everything in that basket will be yellow. Okay, And these baskets are going to be, um, we haven't decided if they're going to be um, eBay, just through the church, for church members only, or whether or not we're going to be able at that point to line them up on a table out there for everybody to see at that point and then to bid on, okay? Those baskets are going to benefit the women's group at that point for future endeavors that we're going to be doing. The second fundraiser um, is I'm looking for all crafty people. Notice I'm looking at Kathy. She's very crafty. <laughs> um, we're looking for anybody. I don't care what your skill is, whether you sew, whether you quilt, whether you can make a pop holder. I don't really, you, you do jewelry making. It doesn't really matter what it is. Um, but we're, what we're going to be doing with that is to help offset the cost of buying all new Kindles and Levis books. Okay? And that is going to be tied in for St. Barnabas Day. So hopefully, 
God willing, if we can still have an outdoor barbecue picnic that's still under discussion at this point where the pandemic is, but we would like to tie in the craft sale with that. Still giving parishioners their own opportunity to um, buy those hymnals themselves so that they can still put a dedication in there. Um, but whatever cost is not met with that, this is where the craft sale will come in and we will help to offset the rest of the cost with that. So if you are interested in either of these two events, contact either myself or Marlene and let us know if you would like to participate. Okay. And I think that's all I have. All right. Thank you, Erin. Nobody don't get so close to it. I'm still learning how this pulpit works and this apparently if I stand in such a way the pulpit kind of falls over, so it's fine. Um yeah, I promise not to destroy the church. Try to anyway. Okay. Well thank you. The the announcements are almost a sacrament. Okay? It's really not a joke. This is uh, life together is sacramental, and this is an expression of that. Anything else? Okay, then. Thank you. Rise for the blessing. May the holy angels surround and protect you. May all the saints pray for you. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thank you, God. Yeah, I forgot the Easter season. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us bless the Lord. Do over, do over, do over. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks. Thank you. Good job. Awesome. All right. Yes. Oh. And the apostles? Oh. oh. Have a good week, all. You too, John and March. Bye. Bye, Robin. Bye, everybody. Have Bye. a good week. Bye. Bye. You Bye. too. Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> I don't know. I don't know what he thought about you, Mike. He thought you forgot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I I know you didn't forget. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah. Hello. You good? I'm good. I'm off the go for today, so. So um.